So today we're going to take a little look at lab number five, uh, simplifying logic circuits. There's really not a lot to this lab, but I will go over it in a little bit of detail with you. Uh, for this lab, you can see that we're going to be using uh, two logic gates, uh, the two input AND gate and the three input NOR gate. And as always, I've given you the reference sections in your textbook and some solve problems that you can uh, look over. Okay, you can see that they've given us a truth table. They really haven't told us much about what the truth table is for, uh, but the, we do have some lines to fill in. I just want to refer you back to lab number four where we came up with the Boolean expression AB or BC and its truth table. So on its truth table, wherever we had a one, we said, oh look, there's BC, and down here there's AB, and there's AB. So you can actually get your expression from your truth table. So this line here would actually be A naught BC. So for this first line, what they're expecting to see is A not B not C not D not and please note the bars do not join all the way across so for this output to be a logic one A has to be zero B has to be zero C is zero and D is zero so on this line where we have another logic one on the output, you can see we have an A naught followed by a B. This indicates that B has to be one. And then C naught followed by D naught. And I'm gonna let you fill in the others on your own. So this is the uh, section in your textbook and it's uh, solve problem 527 and you can see that the truth table is identical to the one that we're using. And this is the entire unsimplified expression that we're looking for. So we're going to take the first expression which is a not B not C not D not and then we say or and then the next expression was A not B C not D not or then the rest of your expressions. This is called the unsimplified sum of the products Boolean expression. So our next step is to fill in a kernel map and this helps us simplify the circuit. So our first expression is A naught, B naught, C naught, D naught and on our uh, grid here we're going to be looking for A naught, B naught where it intersects with C naught, D naught, and that will be our first one. Then you do this for each of the expressions for the truth table. The second expression was A naught, B, C naught, D naught, so you look for that on the grid. So there's A naught, B, where it intersects with C naught, D naught, there's another one. Figure 5-28 in your textbook shows you how to do the elimination with groups of two or groups of four. And you can see in your textbook figure 5-31 shows you using a four variable map and they show you how to uh, simplify groups of two or groups of eight. And figure 5-32 shows you some unusual looping variations. 
The correct answer can be found in your textbook. It's figure 5-34. So we have a group of two here. So the simplified expression for this one, you can see we need C naught and D naught. And here we need A naught, but B and B naught cancel each other out. So this simplifies to A naught, C naught, D naught. So that is going to be one of your expressions. So down here on this line, we're going to have A naught, C naught, D naught. We're going to let you figure out what the other two are. The answer for that can be found in your textbook, 5.29 Solve Problems. Part C of your lab, what we're going to do is we're going to use De Morgan's theorems to change the Boolean expression above so that we use only the 7408 and the 7427. We've given you a hint here to use some of the unused NOR gates to create the OR function. And I've given you a whole bunch of figures here to figure out what's going on. I did place a hint on the top of the next page for the correct answer. So in part C, I'm asking you to use De Morgan's theorem. And what we want to do is we want to rearrange our uh, Boolean expression so that we only use a 7408 and a 7427. Now the 7427 is a 3 input NOR gate. And the expression that we've been developing so far seems to want a 3 input AND gate. So we have to convert the AND gate into an OR gate. And to do that we can use De Morgan's theorem. So in section 5-4 of your textbook we can see that there is a chapter on using De Morgan's theorem. And just to remind you what De Morgan said was he said break the bar and change the sign. So here is the result of breaking the bar and changing the sign. Over here we have another example of breaking the bar and changing the sign. You can also go backwards so you can actually make the bar and change the sign. So these expressions work backwards as well. So this is the sort of expression we've developed so far where we had A bar and B bar and C bar can be rewritten as A or B or C all barred and that would be our NOR gate. And then I tell you that there's another hint here to use the unused NOR gates to create the OR function. So in the textbook they have an example of wiring the NAND gate as an inverter and you can see that they have A coming in on one line and B going to logic 1. So when you take a look at the truth table for the uh, NAND gate, if you just use the lower two entries, you can see if B is equal to 1, then whatever went in on A gets inverted on the NAND gate. So a 0 went in, a 1 comes out. A 1 goes in, a 0 comes out. So by keeping B at 1, then whatever A is, the opposite comes out on the NAND gate. So we need to change our NOR gate into an inverter. So if you look at the truth table that they have for the uh, NOR gate, you can see that if you use the first two entries and leave B at 0, then your input on A will produce the opposite output. So if you input a 0, you get a 1. And if you input a 1, you get a 0. So to use the NOR gate as an inverter, you just run B to ground, or always input a logic 0 on B. 
and then whatever comes in on A ends up being A naught on your output. So this is a truth table for a 3 input uh, NOR gate and as you can see if C and B are both 0 then whatever you put in on A becomes the opposite on the output or is inverted. So to use a 3 input NOR gate as an inverter you just have to run B to ground and C to ground or put in logic 0 and logic 0 and then if you have a 1 on A it comes out as a 0 if you put a 0 on A it comes out as a 1 and you can see on my hint I've done that with two of my NOR gates I just want to show you figure 418 and 419 where they talk about the effect of uh, adding inverters to either the output or the input of the gates. So you can see that if you invert the inputs of an AND gate, you end up with a NOR gate. And figure 4-21 shows you the effects of inverting both the inputs and the outputs of a gate. So you can actually change an AND gate into an OR gate. So for part D, uh, we want you to draw the schematic for the expression in part C. We want you to show the input switches, the output LED, and all the pin numbers. And we're just going to be using the 7408 and the 7427. So I'm going to show you how to do that in CAD software. And what we're going to use is we're going to use multi-SIM. And multi-SIM will bring in all the symbols for you and give you the pin numbers. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. To open up Multisim, double click on the icon on your desktop, the NI Multisim 14.1 icon. will open up a new design for you. This is typical CAD Windows based software. So you've got your basic menu bar at the top here. You've got your user icons. This guy here is for simulating. You have your instrumentation down the right hand side. So your instruments consist of things like voltmeters, ammeters, ohmmeters, oscilloscopes, function generators, those kind of things. If some of these items are not displayed on your particular version of uh, multi-sim, you can go to view and then down to toolbars and you can see that you can click on each of these so here's the instruments, the simulation, components, the main, the view, the standard so these are the standard items that you'll see on a toolbar we have scroll bars so you can scroll to the edge and the lower edge of your drawing. Typically on a CAD drawing we put a title block in here. So to place a title block you go to the place menu item, go down to title block and I like to use example one and open and then just move it around to you're happy with its location and just click the mouse button you notice it has a place for the title and the document number. So if you just double click on it in the title, you can write in something like example one. And in the document number, you can put in your name. When you're finished, you can click on OK. You'll notice the title block is still highlighted. So if you click anywhere, it'll stop highlighting it. And the title is Example 1, and the document number is Darren Holmes. I'm going to scroll back to the uh, left top because I want to put in a small example circuit for you here. So to put in your uh, schematic, all you need to do is go to Place, Component, and in the group, 
the first thing I'm going to do is go to sources and I want to go to power sources so I'm going to select VCC say OK and just drop it on my schematic page I'm going to close it for a second when I place VCC it automatically puts 5 volts so if you double click on it you can actually change it to a different voltage you can go to 12 volts or whatever you need so I'm just going to leave it at 5 volts I'm going to place a few more components so in the sources I need a ground so I'm going to click on OK and place a ground somewhere over here I'm going to change my group to basic and in basic I know I'm going to need a switch so we have different kinds of switches here so I'm just going to click on dip switch 1 and that's a standard switch I'm going to say OK place it about here I know I'm going to need a resistor so while I'm in the basic group I can click on resistor and notice it gives you all the resistor values so I'm going to start with a resistor value of 330 ohms and say OK and put that in my circuit and I want an LED so I've got to change my group from basic to diodes and in the diodes I want an LED and I think I'll use a red LED I'll click on OK and I'm gonna place my uh, LED right about here now I want to know what the voltage drop on an LED is and how much current flows through an LED so for that I'm gonna to go to a group called indicators and in indicators I've got a voltmeter and these are horizontal so the inputs on one side and the outputs on the other so I'm gonna to go to uh, voltmeter vertical say OK and put it in beside my LED and then I want to know how much current's going to go through my LED so I'm going to click on ammeter and I want it to be vertical as well OK I'm going to place it down here and I think that's all the components I need for now so I'm going to close now my ground needs to be moved over so just click on it and drag it over Now to wire this circuit together, all you have to do is go to your first component and you notice the uh, pointer turns into a crosshair. So just do a mouse click on it, and drag it down, and then drag it over to your first item and click on it. And that'll put the wire in for you. Then I'm going to put my next wire in, click, move it over, click and then my resistor to the LED so click over down click then my LED to the ammeter the ammeter to ground and then I want to connect the voltmeter across my LED now this is a nice CAD drawing but I can also simulate this circuit so if you go up to this little play button here where it says run or you can press F5 so click on that and you'll notice the LED is clear so if I come over to my switch you'll notice that when my pointer gets to the switch it turns into a little hand so I can use that to open and close my switch or I can press the A key so I'm going to use the pointer and close the switch notice the LED is now red indicating that it is on current is flowing through my circuit it's 9.732 milliamps and the voltage drop on my LED is 1.788 volts to stop the simulation you notice there's a little square button up here it's red and when you hover over it, it says stop. This will stop your simulation.
In this next example, I want to build a small digital circuit for you. I'm just going to put an AND gate in there. So I'm going to go to uh, Place, Component, and my group is going to be TTL. And I'm going to place it as 7408N. And I'm going to say OK. It's going to ask me for what gate I want, whether it's A, B, C, or D. So I'm going to click on A. So this is my AND gate. I'm going to place it about here. Now it asks me if I want another one from the same IC or one from a new IC. I just want the one gate, so I'm going to press cancel. Next group, I'm going to go to sources and power sources. I know I'm going to need a ground, so I need a ground for my output LED, and I need a ground for my switches. I'm also going to need VCC of 5 volts. Now notice it says hidden power pins are using hidden on-page connectors with the name VCC. Place this global connector will form a virtual connection to those pins. Do you want to continue? Yes. I'm going to close here for a second. So what's it talking about? This gate here has two pins. One's power, one's ground. Right? One's VCC. So the VCC on this IC is going to connect to this VCC symbol. The ground on here is going to automatically connect to my ground symbols. Perfectly okay. I need to go back to place, component. I'm going to change the group to basic. I know I need two switches. So dip switch one. Okay. So this will be my first switch. Then I'm going to place a second switch. I know I'm going to need a uh, resistor. So resistors are in basic. Resistors. I know I need 4.7K for those pull-up resistors. So I need two of those in my circuit. So I'm just going to drop one and then drop a second one. And then I know I need a 330 ohm resistor. To go to my LED. And I know I'm going to need an LED. So the LEDs are in the group diodes. LED, red LED, OK. So I'm going to throw that in my circuit. So here's my resistor 1. It would be nice if it was rotated, so I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to rotate 90 degrees clockwise. Same thing with resistor 2. Right click, rotate 90 degrees clockwise. So R1 is going to come down and go to the first switch. So I'll place it about here. R2 has to go to the second switch, so I'll place it about here. I'm going to move VCC over and down a little bit. And now I'm going to wire this circuit up. So I click on VCC, go down to R1 and click on it. R2, click on it, up and over to the line and notice it puts a dot there where it connects it. I need to hook up my switches to ground and the other switch to ground. So it puts a dot there where there's a connection. Now I notice that switch 1 is operated by key A and switch 2 is operated by key A. So if I press the A key, notice both switches operate at the same time. So on my second switch, I'm going to right click on it 
and it's gone off the screen here but down at the bottom if I have a properties box and it says key for toggle I'm gonna select B and say OK so now when I press the A key just switch one works and when I press the B key just switch two works I don't like that switch 2 is right underneath key A so I can click on just the S2 and I can move it and I might just as well click on S1 and move it as well now I need to hook up the output of my AND gate to my resistor from my resistor to my LED sometimes it takes a couple tries to get it down there and then click on it when you're happy with it and then the output of the LED to ground and now I need to hook up my switch to my AND gate so I'm gonna go down and notice when I go over the bend follows it I really don't want that bend following it back and forth so when I'm happy with where the bend is, if I hit the left mouse button, it anchors it, and then when I move over, I can join it. So right there, I'm going to hit the left mouse button, and then go over to my AND gate. Now I need to hook up these resistors. So there's the first one, and there's the second one. Now, when these switches are open and closed, I'd like to monitor what the voltage is going to be on these two lines. So I'm going to do that with a voltage probe. I'm going to go to place, and I'm going to go to probe and voltage. So now I can bring in this voltage probe, and I can put it on a line. So you notice when it reaches a line, it turns to yellow. So when you're happy with the placement, you can just do a left click on it. Now you'll notice it's going to give me a whole bunch of voltages here. Frequency, DC, RMS, peak to peak. I don't want all those. So I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to go to properties. And then I'm going to go over to parameters. And I want to do custom. And the only thing I really want showing is volts DC so all the others I'm gonna say no to so the only one I have said yes to is volts DC I'm gonna say OK and you notice in here it's just got volts DC it's highlighted right now so I'm just gonna click somewhere on my schematic to stop it from highlighting so now I want to simulate it so I go up to my play button or the run button or press F5 and now it's running the simulation you can see that key A is up and key B is up and that's providing 5 volts to my AND gate so 5 and 5 volts is logic 1, logic 1 the output is logic 1 so when I press the A key I'm now inputting a logic zero and please notice that the volts DC is 10.6 picovolts. Picovolts are very very small I don't know why it doesn't say zero I'm not really worried about it and when I press the A switch again you can see that my LED is on before I can make any changes to my schematic I have to stop the simulation I can tell it's simulating because the red button is highlighted up here where it says stop also the design one is simulating and you can see that it's actually simulating by this green bar going back and forth so I'm gonna stop the simulation and now I can make modifications to my circuit So once you've got your circuit uh, set up correctly and you've done a simulation and you're happy with it, 
you can go up to the uh, print icon and print your uh, circuit out or you could save it and uh, submit your circuit what I like to do is to incorporate this circuit into a uh, Word document so I'm gonna bring up Word and the first thing I like to do in Word is put in a couple of blank lines so on the top line you can label it example and I usually like to highlight this and uh, on the home screen you can increase the font size make it bold center it that kind of thing and where I want to place my schematic I can go back to multi-sim and just drag a rectangle around everything you want to copy over and then on any item do a right click and copy then go back to Word and in your Word document sometimes you can do a right click paste or you can press control V and that'll paste it into your Word document you can click on it and you can center it you can rescale it to a different size so I might like to put in a boolean expression down here to do that I go to the insert menu item and I come over here to equation and I click on equation and then I go into ink equation so in the ink equation I can write in a letter like A and put a bar over it I can put in an OR I can put in a B I can put a bar over it now notice it's come up with a 5 it's got the OR correct but it's come up with a 5 so I can go to select and correct and I can draw a dotted line around the B and then I can select the B so now you can see it's got my equation correct so I can do insert so now I've inserted my equation what if I want a bar over the whole thing I can highlight both of them I can go to accent in an accent it's got over bars and under bars so if I click on the over bar it puts a bar over both of them if I click somewhere else it gets rid of it so I can select this and I can change the font size So I just wanted to show you that you can put in a schematic into a Word document and you can put in Boolean expressions into a Word document. In Multisim, I have drawn the circuit from uh, lab number four. Uh, it's the uh, schematic for part A, combining logic gates. And what I wanted to show you was that there is no uh, pin numbers on any of these gates. The way to get the pin number showing you can go up to options go to sheet properties sheet visibility and over here where it says package pin names and it's got a square box in there click on it and it'll give you an empty box. Click on it again, and it'll give you a check mark. Then say OK. And now it puts the pin numbers on the gate. So the 7408, gate A, pin 1, 2, and 3, 4, 5, and 6. And on the 7432, 1, 2, and 3. But also notice over on the LED it brings up the A for anode and C for cathode and also on the switches it brings up the 1 and the 2 on the switches 
If you don't want these numbers on the switches or the LED, go back to Options, Sheet Properties, turn off the package pin names, and instead do a right click on the gate, go to Properties, and instead of using Sheet Visibility Settings in Display, use Component Specific Visibility Settings, and click on the Show Package Pin Names. Then click on OK, and it brings up the pin numbers just for that gate. Do the same thing for the second gate. Go to Properties, use Component Specific, Show Package Pin Names, OK. And on the 7432, right click, go down to Properties, in Display, use Component Specific Visibility Settings, Show Package Pin Names, OK. Now you have just the pin numbers on the gates that you want to have the pin numbers on, and you don't have additional pin numbers on the switches or on the LED. So you may recognize this uh, particular schematic. It's from Lab 4, Combining Logic Gates, and it's the lab schematic from Part A. And you can see here that I have A, B, and C on my input. So the expression was A, B, or B, C. So A is 1, B is 1. My output was 1. On the other half of the expression is OR BC. So if A is off and B and C are both 1, the light is on. So before we get back to today's lab, I want to show you one more item that uh, Multisim can do. I've stripped out the uh, inputs, so all those switches and resistors are gone, and I've uh, stripped out the output, the LED and the resistor. Uh, we're going to go down our instrument toolbar here and we're looking for one called a logic converter. So if you click on the logic converter and place it in your circuit and if you double click on it it'll bring up the uh, logic converter uh, properties box. Uh, you'll notice it has inputs and it has an output. So the inputs A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H correspond to these input lines down here. And then the last one is your output. So we're going to use A, B, and C for input. So click on A, B, and C. Notice it fills in the truth table for you, but it does not know what the output is yet. So on the schematic, I have to connect A to my A input, B goes to the B inputs, and C goes to the C inputs. The output connects to the last pin. Now over here on the logic converter, the first conversion it does is from logic gate to truth table. So click on that and it fills in the truth table for you. Identical to lab number four's truth table. The next item goes from truth table to boolean expression. So click on that. And notice it gives you A naught B C followed by A B C naught. So this is A, B, C naught. Okay, so it doesn't put the bar over it. It just puts this little tick here indicating it's C naught. And the next item I want to show you is it goes from 
truth table to simplified Boolean expression. So here we have the AB or BC. So now we're going to go back and we're going to finish off lab number five. So the last step is to wire up the circuit and fill in the truth table. Uh, hopefully your circuit will match the uh, first one. If your circuit uh, operation does not match the truth table of part A, uh, you're going to have to start over and redo your expression. Once you've wired up the circuit and verified that it is working, demonstrate it to your instructor so that they can initial it to indicate that it is complete. On the last page of the lab, we have five questions for you to answer and hand in. If you are looking for answers, open your textbook. Page one of the lab shows some hints. In this case, it's solve problems 4.6, 10, 11, 24, 5.1 to 41, and 59. <laughs>